Kevin. Say hi, Kevin. You ready, young lady? Mom is chatting. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Michael Ferraro. I am chairman of the board of directors of the Viking Cancer Foundation. This is our annual report to the community of our 2013 results and our plans for 2014. Uh, for those of you tweeting, we are using the hashtag tonight, hashtag DMC kickoff. Something you should like to tweet or follow us there. Uh, I want to thank the Reston Association for this great space, and also to Capital Cuisine Caterers for the delicious food. Let's come around and talk. Thank you so much. If you need a caterer and you're in Reston, please see him. Uh, also, thank you to Omar Bayet, who's taking photographs tonight, and who has a very special daughter, Madeline, who couldn't join us tonight, but is also a brain cancer survivor and also turned 10 this week. But we want to thank Joey Smiles. For those of you who don't know Joey, Joey's taking photographs tonight. Let's come around and talk. Thank you, Joey. Uh, and he'll have the photographs up on the platform in the next couple days. Keep an eye on our Facebook page. <coughs> also want to thank Cooley LLP for their outstanding pro bono legal services that they have been donating since the foundation began. I'm not sure. There's supposed to be somebody here from Cooley. I'm not sure if they've arrived or not. Yes, no. No. Okay. Uh, before I introduce the foundation's founder and my co-presenter this evening, I do need to recognize one more person, the third member of our family. Uh, my wife, Sharon, is the secretary of the, of the foundation board and has uh, done a, a, a yeoman's job this past year. You'll hear the results in a couple minutes, and I can assure you, without her passion, dedication, nights and weekends working on this foundation, uh, it would not have happened. Most of you know that the first half of last year, I was the chairman of the Reston Chamber, and as chairman of the chamber, I did take a lot of my time away from the foundation, and, and Sharon did a lot of the heavy lifting, and we would not have done what we have done this year without her, so I do want to recognize her. Oh. Right <laughs> But now I'd like to introduce the founder of the Vitamin Cancer Foundation. In April of 2010, as a junior at Chantilly High School, Nikki was diagnosed with a rare form of thyroid cancer. Nikki decided, like many, that her cancer would not define who she was, how she would live her life, or who she would be. She felt she needed to do something positive with her situation and her time. After rallying her family, friends, and school with a Relay for Life team calling it Bite Me Cancer, in the fall of 2010, she founded her foundation by the same name. Over the past three and a half years, Nikki has been recognized for her work by the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, the Virginia General Assembly, and several local media outlets, and by Leadership Fairfax in 2010 with their Community Leadership Award. In 2011, Nikki received the first for Lee Dudley Wanga Memorial Scholarship Fund through the Open Fund. And we do have somebody from the foundation here tonight. Who is he? Jay. 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 Jay's here tonight. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Jay's been an active member of our, our foundation ever since. Since being diagnosed with cancer, Nikki has led and raised with her two relay teams and her foundation over $150,000 in funds for the American Cancer Society and for Biden Cancer. Uh, Nikki again this year had two sets of scans, both in the summer and during the holiday break time. Though there were cancer cells scattered, nothing new has grown and nothing has spread. The most important procedure in 2013, though, was Nikki received a permanent implant to her vocal cord. Her voice is much better, and we are very grateful to the 18 at Johns Hopkins University Hospital for all they have done for Nikki again this past year. Nikki? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, we are very fortunate here. Between Johns Hopkins and the age, we have two of the best facilities in the country. Um, we're looking, looking, out, looking out of a lot of patients, so we're very fortunate. 
Mickey has inspired many with her positive attitude and her motto, anything is possible if you just believe. Ladies and gentlemen, founder of the White right Cancer Foundation, Mickey Ferrara. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and thank you all for attending our 2014 kickoff tonight. I want to give a big thank you to our board of directors and our advisory council for helping to achieve our goals for 2013. Obviously, the achievements of Bite Me Cancer could not happen without all of your hard work. And thank you to all of our donors, volunteers, and supporters. Everyone's help and prayers mean so much. As my dad said, we will co-lead the presentation tonight. My dad will focus on our 2013 accomplishments, and I will focus on our 2014 goals and activities. We will also introduce um, some of the speakers throughout the presentation who will come up and speak. One of the missions of the Bite Me Cancer Foundation is our Teen Support Pack program. Our Teen Support Pack program grew in 2013. The Teen Support Pack program is designed to give teenagers a bag of items supporting them in their treatment of their cancer. This past year, we changed some of the items on the bag based on feedback to include a journal that was designed by our board member, Debbie Jo Wheatley, and a free t-shirt coupon donated by our friends at Custom Inc. Our Teen Bag program doubled last year from distributing 100 bags in 2012 to 200 bags in 2013. We increased, we increased our partners from six organizations to 19, including NIH, Life with Cancer, the Tom Hoffman J. Con, Special Love, and over Fairfax, Johns Hopkins, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, BCU Children's Medical Center, the Georgetown University Lombard Cancer Center, and MD Anderson Children's Cancer Center. We continue to hear from organizations and several teams directly who have received the bags, many of them telling us how great it made them feel to know that they were not alone in their fight, many of them embracing the fight for cancer attitude in the process. In May this past year, Nikki was invited by the Tom Coffin J Fund to participate in their annual ice cream social at the Giants training camp for kids and teens fighting cancer that the foundation supports. Some of the teens that they support fighting cancer also do receive our teen support bags. Nikki got to spend some quality time with Giants linebacker Mark Herzlick, who is also a cancer survivor. He encouraged her to continue the strong cancer fight and not to let others stand in her way. I don't think that will ever happen. <laughs> we had one teenager who messaged us in October through our Facebook page saying, quote, I am 18 years old. I had surgery yesterday. It was a five-hour procedure. The only support I found in the hospital was your bag, and it meant so much to me. Sharon ended up talking to her mom, and the teenager was at, at Inover Fairfax, and actually a thyroid cancer survivor. <coughs> they were both so grateful for the bag and our foundation, and these stories continue to come in and are great for us. One of our team support brand program partners is an organization called Special Love a nonprofit organization whose mission is to support kids at all ages fighting all types of cancer with camps. At last year's Camp Fantastic, a week-long summer camp for kids at all ages fighting cancer at the 4-H Center in Park Royal, our family got to spend the afternoon and evening with the campers, having dinner, and staying for their annual talent show. You know, it's a place where kids don't have to worry about chemo, doctors, you can just be kids for a week. It was just amazing. After the talent show, Nikki was able to give each of the teenagers at the camp a Bite Me Cancer teen support bag, handing out 40 bags that evening and sharing a bit of her cancer story. Here with us tonight is the Executive Director of Special Love, Dave Smith, to share his thoughts about our teen bag support program. Please help me welcome him to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Michael and Nikki. Uh, well, Michael already left Cat Out of the Bank. Special Love is not a dating service. <laughs> I've been with them for their entire 32 years of existence, and I've gotten that question more times than I care to admit. Um, but it was kind of hum humbling, actually, to realize as Nikki was speaking that I was actually Nikki's age when Tom and Sheila Baker, a couple out in Winchester, came in one day to the 4-H Center in Front Royal, where I was working, and without an appointment said, can we sit down and talk to your leadership? I wasn't part of the leadership, but I was the only summer staff person still on site, and so the director of the center invited me into that meeting, 
when they asked, how do we put a camp together that has all of the program benefits of 4-H camp, but all the medical support that kids with cancer are going to need? Um, they had lost a daughter six years previous to cancer, and they, like the Ferraros, wanted to take their experience and make it count for something positive. And so I was very fortunate to be in that very first meeting when they began planning Camp Fantastic. The first week of Fantastic started in 1983, and I volunteered for that year through 86. In 87, I was even luckier because they called me in and said, would you be con consider being our first executive director? Um, they didn't have to convince me. I was only a year out of college and still struggling with what I was going to do for real. Um, and I also gave me a chance to go back to my father and say, you remember those four years I was a camp counselor in the summer and you said you really should have a summer job that's going to get you a career? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been fortunate to spend the last 27 years uh, living that dream. I get to go to camp and be silly and meet wonderful young people like Nikki. We uh, first became affiliated with Bite Me Cancer a couple of years ago, uh, and they told us about the team bag program. They sent us about a dozen bags for our ski weekend, which we just finished last weekend, uh, and we were hooked. And so, like many great partners, we kept in communication, and their support only grew. And so this past summer, when they brought 40 bags, they were actually uh, had enough to, to provide all the teams who were at camp for the week of Fantastic with their very own bag. It's important to, to, to note that that is a, was a teen benefit because like most teenagers, they didn't want to spend a lot of time with the younger kids at camp uh, other than just to be mentoring and so on. They wanted their own identity. They have their own lodge. They get to stay up later than the rest of the kids. And so it was nice to be able to give them something that was for them alone. Uh, everybody gets a camp t-shirt, but not everybody gets a teen bag. It's got a USB drive in it. It's got a t-shirt, a journal, all the cool stuff that teenagers like. And so it was a great bonding activity for them because it gave them kind of a, a perk that the younger kids weren't getting. Uh, and it helped offset some of the, you know, we get a lot of stuffed animals and a lot of, a lot of kids type stuff at camp. And that only goes so far with a teenager. So it was a good bonding activity. It was also a good chance for them to meet Nikki and hear some of her inspirational words. You know, like Nikki, we have a lot of teenagers who've been through very rough times, and uh, it's always wonderful when they get to see somebody who has successfully been going through that and they can, can look up to them. It gives them a roadmap for the future. Well, Special Love has since that uh, first beginning grown to over 14 programs. We do specialized weekend camps for teenagers. We also do weeks and weekends for siblings. Because as we are fond of saying, when a child gets cancer, a family gets cancer. Uh, and anybody who's been through that experience knows that to be true. So our, our programs now encompass all the uh, patients and siblings of all ages. But we are very, very uh, uniquely happy to be partnered with Bite Me Cancer because it gives us that teen niche that we had not been meeting for, uh, to, to date. So we hope that the pro partnership continues for a long, long time to come. And on behalf of Bite Me Cancer Foundation and Special Love, who you are supporting through Bite Me Cancer, thank you for your support. And I hope that you're a part of that uh, long-term relationship. special love camp and meeting some of the teenagers. One of the girls actually ran up to me to show me that she was already wearing one of the Buy Me Cancer bracelets, which was really cool. We have big but achievable go goals for our teen support program in 2014. Buy Me Cancer's goals this year is to distribute 400 more teen bags, which is doubling the 2013 achievement. We plan to grow our list of hospitals and nonprofits who serve teenagers battling all kinds of cancer from 19 to 30. I'm so happy that we have so many teenagers receiving our bags. During the second half of 2014, we are planning to have an in-person activity for some of the local teenagers with cancer, and I'm really excited for that new project. Another mission of the foundation is to invest in thyroid cancer research. Two years ago, Nikki announced the foundation's 50K for 50K campaign. The goal was to raise $50,000 in honor of more than 50,000 individuals who would be diagnosed with thyroid cancer that year, and to invest money into a research grant through the American Thyroid Association. Thyroid cancer has been normally thought as a woman's cancer in the past, but more young people and men are being diagnosed. Thyroid cancer is the fastest growing cancer for both men and women in the United States. 
57,500 can sponsor a two-year thyroid cancer research grant. The funds are awarded to younger scientists and doctors to find more innovative and successful treatments or even a cure for thyroid cancer. At last year's kickoff, we announced that we achieved $20,000 toward that goal. And Nikki challenged us forcefully to raise the additional 37,500 to reach our goal this year. Nikki, I'm here to report to you that not only did we achieve that goal, but we exceeded that goal by $8,000. We will distribute half of those funds this spring after we select the grant to focus in on. Sharon went to the Thyroid Cancer Survivor Association's conference this year in Philadelphia, learning more about thyroid cancer research and specifically the type of cancer Nikki is currently fighting. She met many patients and doctors. We'll all thank her and the foundation for the work we were doing to support research and supporting survivors. I would like to introduce to you now a very special teenager who is battling thyroid cancer and her mom is also battling thyroid cancer. Keegan and her mom, Lisa, contacted us in the summer of 2012 after they found bite cancer on the internet. Jen and Lisa bonded immediately, sharing their challenges for caring for children with thyroid cancer. Nikki and Keegan bonded also, with Nikki talking to Keegan right away about the challenges Keegan was having with kids bullying her about her cancer situation. Keegan and Lisa were living in Pennsylvania at the time, but the family has transferred to Virginia this past summer. Both Keegan and Lisa still have challenges with thyroid cancer. Lisa had another surgery for thyroid cancer just a few weeks ago, and her vocal cords were somewhat damaged, but we hope this is short term. Keegan will now share some of their journey. Keegan? Come on.
that for the 2006-2010 timeframe, thyroid cancer had the largest annual increases. And they're tracking of the 43 most common cancers, they showed thyroid cancer as being the ninth highest in the actual number of estimated new cases this year. Along with the rising numbers, our concern is that, the new, is that new treatments are still needed. We have already had a few researchers from major hospitals reach out to us for funding assistance. As of today, the money raised in 2014 <coughs> is planned to go to my own endocrinologist and researcher, Dr. Douglas Ball, at Johns Hopkins University Hospital. Dr. Ball has been involved in a number of research projects for thyroid cancer, especially for the rare type of thyroid cancer that I have. And he's very grateful to be partnering with us. As you may have heard me say before, my kind of cancer doesn't really have a cure, although in the past two years, there have been two oral chemo drugs approved for treatment of the most serious cases. Both chemo pills are not highly successful and have very serious side effects. For the more common thyroid cancers, there has only been radioactive iodine treatment, which impacts your entire body and doesn't always work. Just a few months ago, the first chemo was approved for those with differentiated papillary thyroid cancer, which means that the radioactive iodine didn't work, like what happened with Keegan. I'm so grateful for all of, for all of you who have helped by me cancer with the Thyroid Cancer Research Program and we look forward to helping with the development of future treatments and perhaps even a cure. Yeah. Our events and fundraising programs expanded again in 2013. Uh, throughout the networking, you may have seen pictures of our events on, on the screens. We started in January with an event at Brian Wright Personal Training, which included a kettlebell class and a silent auction. On April 6th, on, can on Nikki's Cancerversary, we held two events, a 5K run at International Country Club and a fashion event shop and give back in Nicole Miller in Tucker's <coughs> Corner. The next day, Pat Worth had an event for us at the Potomac Falls Express Loop location. In the summer, we held our second Take a Swing event at the Dolls Golf Park with over 100 attendees joining us. In September, we had another event, Drink, Dine, and Donate in both the Tavern and Arlington. And we ended the year with a shopping and cocktail event at J. Crew and Reston for a bit of early holiday shopping. Mr. Grail, we have the president of the Reston Chamber join us. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for the call out. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, in November, we we in November we had a team support bank fundraising campaign in celebration of Nikki's 21st birthday, which we continued as our year-end campaign. We applied for and received two grants this year. One from the Ronald McDonald House Charities to support our teen bag program, and the other from the Land Family Trust. We also applied for and received our combined federal campaign certificate, so now federal employees can select Fight Me Cancer as their, char as their charity to donate to. Like many charities, we have set up a monthly donation program. You can now donate monthly at an amount of your choosing to the Fight Me Cancer Foundation. <coughs> This past fall, we developed our official corporate sponsorship and individual sponsorship programs. Nikki will share more about that shortly. We also want to find a way for individuals who wanted to support the foundation through their athletic races they were personally doing. So this past fall, we kicked off our Athletes for Bite Me Cancer program. With our website partner, CrowdRise, you can walk, run, bike, ride, swim, or even do a try event and fundraise for the foundation. Similar to team and training, all you need to do is set up your own webpage and your event. It takes about five minutes through CrowdRise. Then you can fundraise for the foundation as you train for your race. When you raise $500 for the foundation, we'll send you a training pack, which includes a t-shirt, a quarter bottle, and wristband. We do have our first athlete on the site, a thyroid cancer survivor doing a Spartan race in Colorado named Brittany Hennigan. Some of you may have seen her on our Facebook page yesterday being highlighted. She has also recruited two other athletes of our own to set their own crowd rises page for Bite Me Cancer. I know there are some athletes who are planning to participate in the room tonight. Anyone willing to step up? Lori?